Ready? Yes. I call the order the meeting of the LPA. It is now 6.30 p.m. on March 6. Can we have a roll call, please? Yes. Present tonight we have Mr. Darrell Lopez, Mr. Lawrence Wright, Mr. Tommy Minton, Mr. Curtis Gashlin, Ms. Kristen Switland, and absent is Mr. David Pollock and Ms. Kathy Moore. Thank you. Uh, can we have all cell phones turned off, please, if, if they're not so already or silence one way or the other? <clears throat> I need a motion for approval of the minutes. So moved. Tommy? Yep. Second. Yes. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 This is a public hearing section. <clears throat> There's no public hearing tonight uh, or public comments right now. Uh, so public meeting, this is for local, uh, for the review of proposed revision of table taxes, I guess, staff. Uh, correct. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen of the LPA. My name is John Jones with SNME, uh, 1615 Edgewater Drive. I currently serve as the CRA coordinator for the city of Oviedo. Uh, what we have before us tonight is we have some pro proposed revisions to Table 10, the implementation plan of the Oviedo Community Redevelopment Plan uh, that identifies projects that the CRA uh, is authorized to work on uh, during the redevelopment activities. Uh, the City of Oviedo adopted their original redevelopment plan in 2010 to address conditions of blight and to stimulate economic activity within the CRA area. At the CRA Governing Board at their February 5th meeting this year identified several new projects and project categories uh, that would, they would like to see added to Table 10, uh, the Redevelopment Agency Implementation Plan. And I have physical copies um, of the amended portion of the plan here if you'd like to see just where the, the items slot in. But they do follow the outline uh, presented in the agenda item. Each one is a group. Okay. <laughs> the proposed revisions to the plan, and I'll, I'll wait till you get those items handed out here, just address additional projects and project categories uh, to be included in the plan. It doesn't update any of the redevelopment strategies that were identified in the plan or any of the redevelopment goals, objectives, or policies that were identified in the plan. It just amends the implementation table to add additional projects. In the administration of community redevelopment agencies, if a specific project or strategy is not identified within that redevelopment plan, the CRA cannot use tax increment funds uh, to implement that project. So in, in the short terms, or the, I guess the cliff note version, is if the item is not in the plan or the strategy is not in the plan, the CRA can't do it. So CRA plans tend to cast a wide net and identify a large uh, array of different projects to help them implement the strategies that they've identified in the redevelopment plan. Over the course of the 10 years since the original plan was adopted, or about the eight years, pardon me, since the original plan was adopted, the CRA board has identified additional projects that they would like to act on but those projects were not reflected in the current plan. So in order to give the CRA the authority to act on those projects, they've added them to the implementation table of the plan. Tonight we are here to request um, a review from y'all to determine that these additional projects are consistent with the City of Oviedo comprehensive plan. And if found consistent with the uh, goals, objectives, and policies of the City of Oviedo Comprehensive Plan uh, to issue a, a finding that that is such and recommend that the City Council adopt the amended redevelopment plan. There we go. So the changes that are proposed in the plan um, address the different project categories. In the agenda item, you see the administrative category, the land use and urban form category, and the business and development and grant programs category. Underneath the redevelopment 
cultural and historic preservation category, um, the underlined projects or underlined activities show the new insertions. So under the redevelopment, cultural, and historic preservation category, there's two new entries. One is a, establish a public art program within the CRA, and the second is establish a residential fix-up and neighborhood impro improvement program, a matching grant program. Under the next category, streetscape, the additional project is to support the State Road 426 and County Road 419 Phase Two widening and landscape and hard, hardscape. Under the transit and transportation section, the additional project is to prepare designs, right-of-way acquisition and construction for the Wood Street extension. An additional project under that same category is Oviedo Boulevard striping. A new category was added that was titled Transit and Transportation Infrastructure, and under that item, the Geneva Drive realignment was identified as a potential project. Under the stormwater category, the new project is develop a regional stormwater pond to serve the CRA. Under the utilities category, Oviedo Boulevard reclaimed water extension and water infrastructure expansion phase two widening, I think that's when it's supposed to occur, um, was identified as a potential project also. With regards to budget impact, there is no direct budget or financial impact from the revision of the implementation plan to include these additional projects. Uh, the implementation plan provides a guiding framework for the potential projects that may be implemented by the CRA board. Once projects are identified by the CRA governing board for action and included in an annual work plan, a budget will be developed for them. Projects are traditionally funded through tax increment funding and other revenue streams. Um, the Oviedo CRA has traditionally used a pay-as-you-go method for project implementation. That is, they haven't incurred any debt uh, to pay for projects. So they pay for projects as they have a equal amount or an allowable amount of TIF revenue to cover the cost of those projects. So the recommendation is it is recommended that the Oviedo Local Planning Agency review the proposed revisions and additional projects for the consistency with the adopted comprehensive plan. And if found consistent, uh, the LPA would issue said determination and a formal recommendation to the Oviedo City Council to consider adoption of the proposed revisions to the Oviedo Community Redevelopment Plan. And at this time, I'm, I'm available to answer any questions that you may have about the process. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Roy. Um, <clears throat> there's no budgetary impacts. So the projects that we're adding to this, to the CRA. Yes, sir. Um, you're, you will, the CRA will look at them, determine a budget, as you said. Correct. In the future. Um, how does it, the complete package list that we have from the established one that was from 2010, uh, mm -hmm. is there a prioritization of these projects? My, and the question I'm leading to is, mm -hmm. are, are we going to pull money from other projects to fund these later the, from the, a budgetary perspective? The project are prioritized annually during the city's annual budget work sessions. So the answer is no, you will not be pulling money from another project. There has been a recurring project for debt service associated or a portion of debt service associated with infrastructure installation at Oviedo on the Park. So that will be a recurring project that will happen, I think, in, up to and through 2022. But that is the only recurring project so far identified by the CRA. Okay. Um, now, unrelated to the new projects that are under mm -hmm. the the question I have since we're making a revision to this, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at some of the scheduled budgeted projects that are in here. Mm -hmm. and they don't appear to be on schedule in a sense. I don't, I, there's some of the items in here that said they would be constructed in 2015, 2016. Yes, that have sir. not happened yet. Yes, sir. Um, so I guess that's my, that's kind of where I'm leading to my question is that, um, is this an opportunity to update the schedule to correct it while we're making this revision to the, CRA? We have not been instructed to do that, no, sir. 
Uh, what we've been instructed to do is to add these special projects to it. The overall implementation plan is to act as a framework and a guideline, and the statutes require that you provide that guideline and also an estimate of a range of magnitude cost or probable cost so that the, you can basically identify what you're going to do during what time period and how much it may cost. But there is a large degree of flexibility afforded to the Community Redevelopment Agency as to which projects they prioritize. And additionally, the availability of TIF funds uh, to implement any of the projects identified didn't begin until about three years ago. So we didn't realize any positive um, tax increment value uh, and available funding for CRA projects until 2015. Unfortunately, the CRA plan was adopted at right before the bottoming out of the real estate market. Sure. And so we had a lot of negative ground uh, to make up. Property values uh, were continuing to decrease from 2010 through about 2013 or 14. And then they started to rebound, and they, they rebounded with a vengeance, I'm happy to say. Obviously, my, my concern is that um, priorities change. Yes, sir. Um, we, whether we were directly involved in, in any of the priorities of the projects that were already identified for the CRA, um, I really would not rather see them get pushed aside to, or if they are going to get pushed aside, then, you know, we remove them and obviously reallocate the funding. I just don't want to, I don't want to see us um, push aside other community-related projects that might get pushed over. And the example I would give you is uh, um, the trailhead. You know, I think the trailhead is yes, a major sir portion of the project versus, you know, all of a sudden someone decides that striping on Oviedo Boulevard takes precedence. Yes. Um, so uh, once it leaves our venue in here and we make our recommendation one way or another to the council, then I pretty much assume that it's in. We will not ever see it again. It's basically at the CRA's discretion at that point to uh, prioritize. Yes, sir. You are correct. However, I can relay your um, feelings with regards to the issue of prioritization and the displacement of projects. If you have any projects that you feel may be priorities, uh, I can also relay that information to the CRA board as well. But tonight our mission is to identify whether or not the proposed revisions are consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies. And, and of the I obviously, you, uh, th those were my concerns. Yes, sir. You know, you could please, as you said, take them with you. Yes, sir. Um, the only other recommendation I'd probably make is, like I said, I, I think that there are items in here, you know, that I believe are still consistent with what we want to do, and, and, but I think it should still have a, or, you know, normally we would see the revision to the document that says, like, these projects included in the map or, um, you know, the, the, the CRA document that we're looking at right now. I know you weren't directed to do that, but yes, sir. I think you should have been directed to do that yes, as sir. part of a complete update. We don't normally just put a Band-Aid on our, we wouldn't do it to the Land Development Code, we wouldn't do it to the call plan, you know, if there's a governing document in our system, we should update it accordingly with all new information. I agree with you wholeheartedly. That was my other recommendation. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? I have, I have a question. Yes. Yes. Um, it seems like under maybe you need to point out in the map or the the plan, but the establish a residential fix up and neighborhood improvement program. Yes, ma'am. It seems very specific. Like it's benefiting not the whole of the community. It is, but it isn't. Like the homeowners are really the ones that are get, getting the most benefit for it. Yes, ma'am. So I don't know if I completely agree with that aspect of of this for the CRA, but if you could maybe, maybe that's, maybe it's gonna be developed of what it would include. I, I don't know what, how it's, I guess my concern is ultimately like if, you know, I see that it's gonna be a matched grant and then the homes get, you know, the landscape or whatever gets fixed up, is there, what happens in two years or even eight months with the upkeep of it? it you know, as a taxpayer, you're giving them a lump sum of mm -hmm. money and you're matching mm -hmm. it, but then what happens after that? Okay. So that's that's my real, my only one that I have real issues with on it. Okay. If it should be taxpayer money coming for it. The residential fix-up program um, would only be um, available to residences that are located within the CRA boundaries. Uh, that's a, the limitation, the geographic limitation where you can spend TIF funds. Right. And it will be a, a matching grant program. Any improvements will have to be approved by the CRA board prior to the issuance of any funding uh, to match those payments. Um, they will have to also provide three different 
estimates for the improvements that they're going to uh, have built or have made on their properties. And so it'll be developed in a very similar format to the commercial facade grant program that the CRA currently has right now. Okay. So this would be the, the residential version of it. Is there, is there any type of portion in there where after the fact, you know, to follow up with them, like how, what they're it, I would be frustrated knowing, you know, I know that this might be happening, but if somebody just found out they were giving money and then in even two years, you can't even tell the difference anymore. Right. Usually the residential fix-up programs are bricks and mortar type of improvements and not something that, like landscaping, that if it's not maintained would die, but something that will have a permanent or more lasting improvement value on the, the residential structure. So we're trying to increase the livability and the quality of the residential structures in the area, basically address conditions of blight. Landscaping is not a condition right, of blight. Right, I understand that. I'm, I guess, is it more of the historic homes, residents, that, are, that this would be benefiting, or is it any home within this area? It would be any home within the area. Okay. Any other questions? No, that's it. <clears throat> yeah, I do. Um, I need a little clarification on the Wood Street uh, yes, sir. extension. Is it a road extension or a pedestrian connection? It would be a roadway extension. And let me break I, out I, my, I don't have my there's phone. nothing on there on the uh, yeah. conceptual master plan. Uh, this is Wood Street? Yeah. So there's a roadway that runs around here. Okay, so does it need to show on this master plan? It does show on the master plan going through um, by not being, how do I say, uh, graphically exact, it doesn't preclude it from implementation. Okay. But the I, key I, is how to get included. It, was just, it was hard to follow. Understood. Because it's not really an extension, it's just okay. a connection. So Wood Street is here. It's hard to see it. Yeah. Wood Street is here, and this is um, the new road uh, that connects with the little park okay. that goes along the wetland, windy fine way. And what happens is that we have different um, uh, levels, different right, right, elevation. and we want to connect. So right now, there is no connection pedestrian okay. or, or, or uh, vehicular, and we want to push for connectivity. That's what it, it had always been planned to connect. So Wood Street is connecting which way? What is it? Uh, Wood Street and Windy Fine Way. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. The, uh, the, the master plan is to show the general location of the proposed improvements. And the, the graphic detail doesn't allow you to, to see that extension. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Thank you. No, my pleasure. I don't really have anything more than what Larry Capri said. Okay. So, uh, what is the board's recommendation? Do you have other questions? No, I, I have another question. Okay. Just um, you good? Again, I apologize. Uh, no problem. Could you again give us a little bit more background? In you said you're the acting CRA director. Yes, sir. Um, give us a little bit more background. I'd like more background on on your position than how you're in that role. So. Yes, sir. Um, we've been providing economic development and community redevelopment services to the city of Oviedo since 2010. So are you with LDI then? I was with LDI at that time and have subsequently, uh, our company has been uh, absorbed by two other companies, um, Little John Engineering and also uh, S&ME. So we are currently S&ME employee. The, uh, the same team that put together this plan and has provi been providing service to the city of Oviedo remains within S&ME. So myself and all the supporting cast that has worked on this project. We just have a new boss. And again, the reason I ask is I think, I think in the body, either in the report and or the, you know, our report was that um, it was either going to be a hired position, in this case it's a sub-consultant position. Yes, sir. Um, or we were going to assign it to someone within the company and then have our, you know, staff take care of it. Are we in a position where we do that or is that, I don't know, I guess I'm asking, City staff at this point, whether mm -hmm. or not. So, um, 
you know, is it still economically feasible for us to continue with the sub-consultant role? Um, that's that's kind of where I was just trying to find out where our, our yes. direction is. Yes, sir. That was an item that was discussed at, at the beginning of this fiscal year, and it is an item that will be discussed at the beginning of the annual budget workshops. It's something that the CRA board is, is trying to weigh right now as to whether they have enough projects and activity to warrant a full-time CRA position or other positions that would complement the CRA as well, whether it's a full-time CRA director and a part-time economic person or a planner with a CRA assignment or assistant city manager that has the role of CRA coordinator. But they haven't made that determination as of yet. It uh, is, one, one, one yes, sir. Um, it's, it's, it's really more about the budget stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I said, I obviously I've identified that there are things here that are not really on schedule as you identified. That, yes, sir. Um, you know, it's really based on economics at the time. Yes, sir. Um, is there a, a time in the future where we can get it updated? You know, for instance, I guess the question I would have, you know, would be is we are, I think we were funding, you know, obviously certain aspects of all of these. Are they funded at this point? Do we have the monies in, in reserve or accounted for at this point? You know, what's funded, what's not, that kind of stuff. Um, while this, you know, again, is all good and said, but it really doesn't tell us a true picture of where we're at right now. And that is correct. The, uh, the CRA identifies projects annually that they would like to see included in an annual work plan. They draw those projects from the implementation table. So that is the only area where they can pick projects from. The CRA has the policy authority to prioritize which projects go in which annual work plan. So there, there is no assignation of funds to particular projects um, in advance. Is the, what, what's the meeting? How often does the CRA meet? Uh, the CRA meets roughly each month, sometimes every other month, depending on the workload of the city council and the agenda load of the city council, so and also around holidays. Government only city meeting or is that a public meeting? It precedes the city council meeting, so it's usually that first first and third Monday. First and third Monday, five thirty in the afternoon. Great. Thank you for all. Oh, you're welcome. Anybody else? So what's the uh, board's pleasure? I recommend approval. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Well, any other discussions between us? No. Well, so I'll call vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? It carries. So that was painless. <coughs> <laughs> we don't have any public hearings, uh, discussion items. Does anybody have any discussion items they want to bring up? Okay, no. Uh, future meeting dates, uh, Tuesday, March 20th. Uh, no meeting, it's been canceled. And Tuesday, April 3rd. Are we gonna, do we have anything yet for April 3rd? I think we may have something for April 3rd. So we were directed by City Council to um, research uh, microbreweries as a use. So when we did that, we had a discussion yesterday with City Council. So we were directed to move forward with the LDC amendment. But I think the, for the LDC amendment, it's going to be April, the second meeting in April, because we need to advertise. So we need to prepare the amendments and advertise the amendments, and we'll bring to you in the second meeting of uh, April. The first meeting of April, we have some boat dogs um, re being revised. At this point, I, it's not confirmed. So we'll, we'll make sure that uh, we give you some weeks in advance if we'll have the first meeting in April. Thank you. Okay. So we're talking about meetings. Any movement on the getting the uh, engineering for the roads to uh, present to us? Well, we are still doing the, the uh, update on the levels of service. It may take a little while, but we'll... It's okay. still in our agenda to bring to have a discussion with you, with you all. Bring the engineer, bring, bring our consultant, and update you all on the, on the, you know, Perfect. traffic, on the improvements, and and all the good stuff. 
So it, we'll, we'll do that. All right. Thank you, Teresa. You're welcome. Is there a motion to adjourn? So made. Second. 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 All in favor, Second. say aye. 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 Thank, Thank you very you much. much. Yeah, right. <laughs>